Coming after the hurricane, that red tide is now blooming along some parts of the southwest Florida coastline from Sarasota County to Collier County. Yeah, scientists are blaming the rapid increase in nutrients just flooding the waters, feeding red tide and other algae blooms. To break it down for us tonight is Fox 4 meteorologist Andrew Shipley. In a report from Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission last Friday, red tide expanded from three samples off Sarasota County to 56 samples across four counties positive for red tide. I spoke to an FGCU professor and member of Florida's Blue Green Algae Task Force, Dr. Mike Parsons, about the current red tide and what we can expect moving forward. For red tide showing up off a of collier, for example, is this part of one bigger bloom coming in? And so we just saw the you know, tip of it showing up between Venice and Sarasota. And now the rest of it is starting to move on shore. Dr. Parsons is looking at past red tide blooms to understand what might be happening post Ian. He says if we look back at post Hurricane Irma, we saw a small red tide bloom in the fall with a larger bloom that came during the springtime. Similar to what we're seeing with Ian, we did have a red tide starting right after Irma. And it, and it kind of stayed small for a little bit, but it just persisted. And then the springtime, it really started taking off, made it through the summer, which is atypical. Dr. Parson says it's still too early to know if that will happen again. But with the expansion of red tide to the south last week, he says he's a little surprised to see that movement with the ocean current models showing more of a push on shore. It is a little bit surprising in that we were just out there on the Hogarth a couple of weeks ago and we're collecting water samples, you know, 60 miles off of, of Naples and didn't see it. So far, FWC has not reported any fish killed due to red tide. Dr. Parsons says they have found a few locations with low oxygen levels from the current red tide, but nowhere near to the extent that they saw during the springtime post Irma. But as this red tide develops, you know, as soon as we start seeing more of those orange and red dots on the maps, that means the cell concentrations are getting high enough where the toxin levels would be high enough to kill the fish. So that is a big concern. That's something that we don't want to see. Dr. Parsons says there are other algae blooms that are feeding on Ian's nutrients right now as well. As those die off, red tide can feed on them, expanding the existing bloom. That said, there's still a lot of freshwater runoff causing a barrier between those blooms and the existing red tide. Because when you look at red tide, it really needs above a salinity of 24 about. So it has to be mainly gulf water and that dilutes a lot of those nutrients out from that freshwater discharge. But by the time it mixes, if there's a lot of nutrients there or recycled nutrients, it could be a, a significant source of nutrients for it. Yeah, Florida Department of Health in Sarasota County on Thursday issued a county alert for elevated red tide levels across several beaches in the county. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission will issue an update on the ongoing red tide on Friday. In the studio, meteorologist Andrew Shipley, Fox 4.